I've heard you say this before, uh, good artists copy, great artists steal. Exactly. Are people mad when single artists do it, or are they mad because this like money-making corporation is doing it now, and, and that's where the problem is, because now they see you know, millions of dollars are being made, and they're kind of like left out from it. Hey everyone, it's Hatch Duo. I'm Mike, and next to me is John Tai. And today, we're going to talk about whether or not it's ethical to use AI in the context of design. Ooh, juicy, juicy topic. Yeah. One that's probably going to be heated with a lot of different opinions, right? Yes. Why are we talking about it? So everyone's talking about AI right now, right, Mike? Yes. Like LinkedIn, we've had several conversations. I know you've had some very had heated, some, heated uh, comments. Some debates and got some backlash for some of the things that we posted. As you know, AI is on a runaway train. There's no stopping it. If you're not on it, you're going to be left behind, right? You're already left behind at the pace that it's moving. And uh, we just felt this was a good topic to bring up because as new technology pioneers into new emerging spaces, you know, ethics does come into question and Hatch Duo doesn't have a strong stance yet because we're still learning as to like what is right or wrong, but we definitely wanted to talk about it, raise some questions and see what you guys think. And this is by no means any legal advice and we're not lawyers, we're not patent attorneys. Uh, this is just our own opinions. I think there, there, there are several schools of thoughts right, regarding AI. There are those, the more, the more purists, the traditional designers, uh, and we're talking purely about designers that you know, feel strongly about you know, using, utilizing their skill sets, the traditional design methodologies. And then there are new school thinking, right? The new school, as we know it today, utilizes AI as part of their toolbox. A lot of the, the ethic questions that arise using AI and creativity is that a lot of the programs that are being utilized, Midjourney, Dolly, etc., are not opted in by artists that the algorithms are trained on. So, for instance, Midjourney uses an AI algorithm where it's trained over hundreds of millions of images uh, of existing art, art images, concept art made by uh, artists themselves. They don't fully like replicate them one to one, but it uses instances of them in order to aggregate you know the generative ai image and so because of that like a bunch of people are suing midjourney now because they feel like their art was taken without their permission um, and then the question of copyright comes about right and then the other stereotype is like oh if you're using ai you're not really a designer right because the ai is doing the work for you but uh yeah it's it's definitely a heated topic and there's definitely two sides of the, the story in terms of the limitations of ai I think it's important to note that there are, are actually quite a few. Uh, one is that AI has to learn on past data in order to generate its images, right? So if, if we're just talking about generative visual AI right now, it's trained using algorithms. That means that like ultimately humans can still lead in terms of creativity. Humans are still kind of the art director, so to speak. So it's not like you can just tell the AI, hey, go and design me a, a working drone that can actually fly. It won't know how to do that. You're gonna have to navigate and almost teach the AI um, like an art director would to like a junior designer in order to get the outputs that you want. So if the question of ethics is that the AI is aggregating a bunch of images in its database, in its brain, and it's outputting images based on the influences of these images, how ethical or non-ethical is it? That's debatable, right? Because if you actually look at industrial designers, let's take a look at just our own team here and just designers as a whole, they're mood boarding, they're grabbing images from the web, from Pinterest, from Google, to influence their own brain, right? And so they're not necessarily outputting, you know, one-to-one -one the BMW grill or an Apple iPhone into like this new toaster that they're designing but there's a lot of influences in how they're doing it. Like it's a question of well, what's the line, right? Is there a line? What is the line? Or what's the gray area of inspiration and influence versus like actual just one-to-one -one replication of something? So, so what I've gathered there is that you're, what you're talking about is evolution. Mm -hmm. And I'll take transportation design as an example. Sure. Can you take a 1950s vehicle and surpass the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s? 2000s to get to a Well, you're referencing. You're going to be. Rep you're going to reference the legacy. Yeah. You're going to reference the legacy so that it stays in line with the brand language, right? And in a sense, that's what the AI is doing as well. For instance, if we're designing a Steph Curry shoe, okay. 
we're gonna have to say it needs to have Under Armour brand language so it still looks like an Under Armour shoe, right? Yeah. So what's the difference between telling the AI to do that versus a designer? Mm -hmm. So I'm going back to the process of evolution, right? Can you design vehicles with these, you know, without going through all these different examples like swooping curves, faceted edges, kidney grills, or mm -hmm. BMW, like all those different elements, yeah. can you evolve from the 1950s? Can you surpass like 60 years of vehicle design and get to vehicles that we have today? Electric vehicles, for example. Yeah. Without having to Without having that legacy of the process. Correct. And I would argue that you can't. Yeah. yeah. So I would argue that evolution, iteration, is part of design process. Like, design is not a single endpoint; it's a spectrum of exactly what you see. You can't get from A to Z without yeah. going through B, C, D, all the all the different letters, right? Right. But I think like where everyone has a problem now is like, oh man, this AI can now do that 50 years compressed into two seconds. It's learned what we did for the last hundred years. Right. And so it's I a think. Matter of months. Yeah. Here's what I think. Like we obviously experiment with AI here at Hatch Duo. We think it's a really cool technology tool. I think there are gray areas on the ethics. I know Adobe Firefly is trying to circumvent that by saying hey, they're only using, you know, generative images of generative images, you know, things like that. But ultimately it's like, if we actually take a look at the manual design process or even engineering processes, when you guys are designing mechanisms, do you guys, are you guys always reinventing the wheel? Are you referencing? Not always. Um... You know, you know, to minimize risk, we try to take, at, take a look at what's already available, what's tried and true. Yeah. It's really difficult to patent something that's already been done, yeah. like a rack and pinion, for example. Yeah, so yes, I think there's ethical. It's where you draw the line. You have to determine that, I think, as, as a user. Is it fair or is it unfair to use someone else's work? Personally, I, I don't think it's fair if you try to take credit for someone else's work. But again, general AI, you have no control over those algorithms and, and what you can and cannot use. As a creative yourself, John, what are your opinions? Like, do you think there's, there's ethical ways that we can use AI? Absolutely. I think uh, we are using it ethically even right now, uh, at least Hatch Duo is. Case in point would be, if you remember when we started patenting Aggregate, the watch, it was like one of those things where it's like, okay, we were, we were asking our patent lawyers, so if we're protecting our patent, how, how easily could someone else create this concrete watch? And their response was actually really surprising and in some ways um, enlightening for us, which is if someone took our design and changed it three different ways uh, in terms of the way the design looks, then it's another completely original design. And so taking that concept, which, you know, patent law, right, that runs through here through the United States, the way patent law works, and you apply this to AI ethics of appropriation, I would say as long as the image that's being appropriated is changed, modified in a considerable manner, or at least like minimum level of appropriation or like change and refinement, then who's to say that it's not a completely different medium? The same goes for art. If you actually analyze art and the way, especially modern art's done now, there's a lot of appropriation going on, especially in pop art. And so if you take that into account and you relate it back to this visual generative AI, I think the same thing is going on here and and as much as people will not like it, just like people will not like the art being appropriated by other artists, it does not necessarily mean that it's ethically wrong. Like public domain, things that are out in the open visually to be digested, you gotta know that people can be inspired by that and, and use that and, and uh, subsequently the machine learning algorithm can be influenced by that as well. So in closing, uh, I hope you enjoyed our conversation. This is by no means any legal advice or take any particular stance. We hope you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if you agree, disagree, or have, or we would like to share comments of your own. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, let's, let's hatch, hatch awesome. awesome.